Hello everyone, Jen here, Golden State Times, and today we have a different type of video. Usually I do news, um, and I was actually going to use a leftist media um, outline for this, but it was completely biased, so I just wanted to do it myself. So today, we're going to be looking at Donald Trump, President Donald Trump's cabinet members in all of the positions that he still has to fill. Two of them have been filled. One of them is already confirmed. Uh, the term begins on January the 20th, which is the vice president of the United States, Mike Pence. And the other one is Attorney General Jeff Sessions, but he is pending Senate confirmation. So we're going to go through all of the ones that he has to fill for his cabinet. And we are going all to also look at the people that might be on the short list. This is not 100% sure, but it's the closest that we got. So first, we're going to start off with Vice President, which confirmed Mike Pence. Then it's going to be Secretary of State, Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary of Defense, Attorney General, Secretary of the Interior, Secretary of Agriculture, uh, Secretary of Commerce, Secretary of Labor, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Secretary of Tran Transportation, Secretary of Energy, Secretary of Education, Secretary of Veteran Affairs, very important, and Secretary of Homeland Security. Now, we have um, confirmation that the one of Homeland Security could be filled within the next day or so. President Donald Trump had tweeted earlier today saying that they're going to work very hard throughout this weekend that by Monday, a lot of these positions could be filled. So we're going to do an update when those confirmations come in, uh, maybe one by one, maybe one or two. So right now we're just going to uh, focus on his cabinet, which is the main secretaries of everything. And, um, and then in another video, we're going to focus on cabinet level officials and we're going to go to other high level positions and stuff like that. So for the secretary of state, these are the people that are on the short list. And we got John Bolton. He's the former U.S. state ambassador to the United Nations. And we got uh, Bob Corker. He's a senator of Tennessee and he's the chair of foreign relations committee. Rudy Giuliani, America's mayor. He is a United States attorney and He's, he was also the mayor of New York. Uh, Richard Haas. He is president of the Council of Foreign Relations. Nikki Haley, which according to South Carolinians, a terrible governor, but she is the governor of South Carolina. We got Zalme Kalhizad. I hope I said that right. And he's the former United States ambassador to the United Nations also. We got Stanley Macristall. I hope I said that right. He's a retired general of the United States Army. He commanded many troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. And we got David Petraeus. He's a former director of the Central Intelligence Agency. And Jim Webb. So according to, to this, um, I'm getting this from Wikipedia. Because, like I said, all of the other stuff that showed all these people also completely and utterly biased. And it was just disgusting when I was reading through it. I didn't want to use it. So I'm using Wikipedia. Um, it's very, very neutral. Very just, you know what, this is who it is. This is who is going to be and all this other stuff. There's no opinion on it. There's nothing. So it's good. Now, when it comes, when it comes to Secretary of the Treasury, we got uh, Tom Barrick. He's a private equity real estate investor. He's also the CEO of Colony Capital. Now, we made a video about this and people thumbs it down and started talking a lot of shit. But here it is. Jim, Jamie Diamond or James Diamond. He's the CEO of G JP Morgan Chase. If you haven't seen that video, make sure that you click in the description below. A lot of people gave me a lot of shit over this. But here he is on the short list. And he's a very, very... Uh, he's going to be really, really close. If it's not him, it's going to be really close. He's going to be like second 
uh, contender for for the position, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be him. Now we also got Jeb Henserling. He's the chair of the House Financial Services Committee in the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives. Um, we got Steve Mukin. He's Goldman Sachs partner. He is also the Relativity Media producer. He was also Trump's campaign finance chair. Relativity Media is right now in a very, very really, really, really big uh, lawsuit. So I don't know if this will be a good idea for Trump. He, 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 has, he has a lot of baggage right now, this guy, Steve. So let's move on. Tim Pawlenty, he's the former governor of Minnesota. We got Wilbur Ross. He's an American investor. Kevin Warsh. He's a former Federal Reserve governor. Never heard of him. But if you guys have, let us know. So on the first one, on the uh, Secretary of State, let us know who's going to win. And on the Secretary of the Treasury, also let us know who you guys think they might pick. My, my money is on Jamie Dimon. I don't know, but I feel it. And I made a video about it. It's in the description below. Secretary of the Defense, we got Kelly Ayoti. She's an outgoing U.S. Senator of New Hampshire. We got uh, Tom Cotton. He's a U.S. Senator of Arkansas. Stephen Headley, former U.S. National Security Advisor. Duncan Hunter, former chair of the uh, House Armed Services Committee. And also former U.S. Representative of California 57 Congressional District. That's really close to mine. Mine is actually 51st. Um, John Kyle, former U.S. Senator of Arizona. And we also got Jim Talent. He's the former Senator of Missouri, who is also a U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee member. We got Jim Webb, former domestic. Oh, so, sorry. Former Democratic United States Senator uh, and also United States Secretary of the Navy. Jim Woosley, former Director of Central Intelligence. Jim Woolsey. Okay, so let us know who you guys think might get Secretary of Defense. Um, out of all these people, I do not know, not even one. <laughs> so let us know what you guys think. Secretary of the Interior, we got Jan Brewer. She was on many, many uh, Trump rallies. With every single time he went to Arizona or any state that was close, she would always be there to introduce him, talk about him, and she pushed for him very hard in Arizona. She's the former governor of Arizona. Uh, Mary Fallon, she is the governor of Oklahoma. We got Ro uh, Robert Grady. He's a venture capitalist, private equity investor. We got Harold Hamm. He's an oil and natural gas businessman. Killer. Forrest Lucas, CEO and president of Lucas Oil. And this, this is what you're going to see a lot too, guys. I don't know if you notice this, but a lot of CEOs, a lot of businessmen, a lot of hardcore killers are going to go in that, you know, that, that's what Trump wants. Trump wants somebody that's, that's just you know, a killer, like he said, goes in, takes care of the deals, makes them happen, does, you know, doesn't, doesn't give any, any, uh, you know, any little nudge. He just goes in and takes care of business how he's supposed to. Uh, we got Cynthia Loomis. He's an outgoing U.S. representative uh, from Wyoming. Sarah Palin. She's a, obviously a presidential nominee for vice president, former governor of Alaska. We got Richard Pombo. He's former chair of the House Natural Resources Committee. Uh, Mead Treadwell, former lieutenant governor of Alaska. And that's for Secretary of the Interior. Let us know who you guys think is going to win. On this one, I think Jan Brewer has a very, very good chance, but also... We uh, we also got uh, Harold Lamb, which Harold Ham, sorry, he's very very close to Trump. He has talked about him before, and um, who knows on that one? Who knows? We got Secretary of Agriculture, and on here we got Sam Brownback. He's the governor of Kansas. Chuck Connor. He's a former acting United States Secretary of Agriculture as of right now. He might keep his job. I don't know. Dave Heinz Heinemann, 
He's former governor of Nebraska. We got Tim Holskamp. Outgoing U.S. representative of Kansas. We got Sid Miller, Texas Agriculture Commissioner. So we got Sonny Purdue. I hope I said that right. He's the former governor of Georgia. And we got Rick Perry. <laughs> Rick Perry, former governor of Texas. Oh, God. Okay, so I don't know. They had to throw him in there somewhere. So I guess they throw him as the Secretary of Agriculture. That's funny. Um, on this one, I have no idea. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Secretary of Commerce. We got Herman Cain. He is a former chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City, Omaha branch. Chris Christie, even though he got kicked off of being the, uh, the one in charge of the transition team, but he is also in the short list now for Secretary of, the Co of Commerce, which is a, a horrible idea. But he's the former governor or he's the governor of New Jersey, former U.S. attorney of District of New Jersey. We got Dan, uh, Dan Domenico. I hope I said that right. Former Nucor Corporation CEO, trade advisor to Donald Trump. So there you go. I think that that just pretty much uh Pretty much says it. He was the trade advisor to Donald Trump. I don't know who else can get the position for that other than him. Um, but we also got Lou Eisenberg. He's a businessman, Republican National Committee finance chair. We got Linda Mc. Oh crap! Okay, so we got Linda McMahon. She's uh, she's the the wife of Vince McMahon. And she's also twice former Republican for U.S. Senate uh, nominee for Connecticut. That one's really crazy. OK. And we got David Perdue. He's a U.S. senator from Georgia and Wilbur Ross, American investor. It's crazy to see Linda McMahon in there. But anyways, let us know who you guys think is going to get secretary of the commerce. I think it's Dan Dan DeMico. I think that's who's going to get it at the end. But it's pretty cool to see Linda McMahon in there. Um, we got Secretary of Labor. And we got two people on this. We got Victoria Lipnick. She's a member of, of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Also former U.S. Assistant Secretary to Labor uh, and Deployment Standards. And we got Andy Pudsner. He's the Chief Executive of CKE Restaurants. CKE restaurants. I got to I got to look that up. I don't know what that is. Let us know who you guys think is going to take Secretary of Labor. Secretary of Health and Human Services. We got Rich Bagger, Vice President of Kelgen, former Transition Executive Director. Mike Huckabee, former Governor of Arkansas, former Chair of the National Governors Association. Uh, Bobby Jindal which has been a really, really bad critic when it comes to Trump. He's been talking shit, and still to today, till right now, he's still talking shit. But for some reason, he's in the short list for Secretary of Health and Human Services. He is the governor of Louis former governor of Louisiana. Uh, Tom Price, he's the chair of the House Budget Committee, also U.S. Uh, representative to Georgia's 6th Congressional District. Rick Scott, governor of Florida, is also in this. So there's a lot of people that were running against him. You got Mike Huckabee, Bobby Jindal, Rick Scott, a bunch of other people that were running with him. Um, now we go to let us know who you guys are, who do you guys think is going to take this one. Now we're, we're moving on to Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. On this one, we got Rob Astorino. He's part of the, the Westchester County Executives. Scott Brown, former United States Senator of Massachusetts. Rick Lazio, he's former U.S. Representative from New York's 2nd Congressional District, 2000 Republican nom nominee uh, for U.S. Senator of New York. And we also got Pam Padenude, hope I said that right, President of J. Ronald Terwilliger Foundation, for Housing American Families. Um, she's also the former director of housing policy of bipartisan policy centers, former assistant secretary of HUD for community 
planning and development. Holy hell. She has a really good resume. <laughs> so who knows? On that one, who knows? She has a really good resume. But who knows if she did good while she was there. So that, that, it always goes one way or another. So if you, if you want to let us know who might get this position, do it in the comment section below. Secretary of Transportation, Chris Christie's also in this. And that's kind of weird. But he, I guess Trump wants to put him somewhere, but he just doesn't know where, where he'll fit best. Um, again, he's the governor of New Jersey, attorney, uh, U.S. attorney of the District of New Jersey. Uh, John Micka, former chair of the House Transportation Committee, outgoing U.S. representative of Florida's 7th Congressional District. And we also got Mark Rosenker. He's former chair for the National Transportation Safety Board. And Jim Simpson, he's former New Jersey Commissioner of Transportation and former Federal, federal Transit Administrator. So he has a really good resume. Let us know in the comment section below. Secretary of Energy, we got James Connachton. Um, Chief Executive of Not Nautilus Data Technologies and former Chair of Council of Environmental Quality. We got Robert Grady, venture capitalist and private equity investor. We got Harold Hamm, billionaire and also Continental Resources CEO. And Kevin Kramer, U.S. Representative of North Dakota's largest congressional district, I guess. Let us know who's going to be it below. Secretary of Education, we got a whole bunch of people. And we got Tony Bennett, former Florida Education Commissioner. Kevin Cavo, I think that's how you say it. Member of Council of the District of Columbia. Uh, Mitch Daniels, President of the Purdue University System. Former Governor of Indiana. Betsy DeVoe. Uh, former chair of the Michigan Republican Party, Bill Evers, Hoover Institution senior advisor and also of the United States Secretary of Education, Luke Messer, or Messier, whichever way it goes, U.S. Uh, Representative of Indiana 6th Congressional District, Michelle Ree. She is the former uh, counselor to the District of Columbia Public Schools. Uh, Gerald Robinson, former Virginia Education Secretary, and Scott Walker, Governor of Wisconsin. And this is for the Secretary of Education. And uh, let us know who you guys who you guys think is going to take it. And on this one, Secretary of Veteran Affairs, there's only one person on the list. Now, Trump might pick him or Trump might just come up with someone just randomly like he did with uh, with the vice president. Nobody ever even came close to thinking that Mike Pence was going to be it. But that's the type of person that Donald Trump is. He might have a list. But at the end of the day, he's going to have his choice that is super secret and only him know about it. And at the end, just put him in. That's just the way that Trump is. And uh, for Veteran Affairs, we got Jeff Miller, chair of the Home the House Veteran Affairs Committee, U.S. Representative to Florida's 1st Congressional District, Jeff Miller. Let us know what you guys think. Is he going to be the Secretary of Veteran Affairs or not in the description below? Now we got Secretary of Homeland Security, and this is very, very important, along with everybody else. But this one, a lot of people are going to keep their eye on because we need somebody in there that is going to take care of business when it comes to Homeland Security. Someone that is tough, someone that goes in there and takes care of business. Okay, someone that is not going to have any wiggle room, someone that is going to go in there and take care of anything that needs to be taken care of. And the contenders, we got Joe Arpaio. He's an outgo share, outgoing sheriff of Maricopa County. Very tough. We got Chris Christie, governor of New Jersey. I don't know why he's in there. Uh, David Clark, Milwaukee County Sheriff. Very tough. I, I love this guy, David Clark. That's who either David Clark or Joe Arpaio are my picks. And I'm per pretty sure that a lot of people's picks 
But if I was to go between David Clark and Joe Arpaio, I will go with Sheriff David. Sheriff David Clark, because he has come out and said, you know what? This is how we take care of of um, of writers. This is how we take care of this. this is how you take care of that. So he will have a, a really good plan in an iron fist when it comes to Homeland Security. Sheriff Joe is very good on the border. Very, very good on the border. Nobody can can say that. Um, nobody cannot say that uh, when it comes to to that issue. But when it comes to people rioting and people causing problems, he's not that good. And, you know, yeah, his prison system is, is perfect. But implementing stuff, he always has had a lot of problems. So we don't need somebody that has had a lot of problems trying to get things through. We're trying to get someone that is going to be tough and is going to push things through. So I think my my pick is David Clark as uh, Secretary of Homeland Security. But that's just me. Let us know who you guys think. Um, the other guys are John Katko, U.S. Representative of, of New York's 24th Congressional District, and Mike McC McCall. He's the chair of the of House of Homeland Security Committee and also U.S. Representative to Texas 10th Congressional District. So, yeah, guys, those are the positions that are going to be filled soon. These are it. And some of them, oh, well, actually, most of them are going to be uh, have to be confirmed by the Senate first before they actually go in. Um, the ones that have to be confirmed by the Senate is... Hold on, I'm going to tell you right now. See, the, this one has to be a confirmed by the Senate, pending Senate confirmation, which is Attorney General. And there's also some other ones that have to be um, that have to be confirmed by the Senate, along with cabinet level officials and other high level positions like Director of the CIA. Uh, national security advisor, all those have to be confirmed by the Senate. So some don't, some do. But we have a article here, and this one comes courtesy of the Washington Post, and it says, President Trump's cabinet picks are likely to be easily confirmed. Be that's because of Senate Democrats. It says that sem Senate Democrats are not going to be able to block Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions his bid to become the attorney general, and they can't do much to stop Kansas Representative Mike Pompeo from assuming the helm of the CIA, and they have themselves to thank for it. That's because exactly three years ago, the Democrat Senate majority led by Harry Reid rammed through controversial rules, fundamentally changing the way the Senate does business. They unleashed in November of 2013 what they called the nuclear option, allowing senators to approve by a simple majority all presidential appointments to the executive branch and the, uh, the judiciary branch, with a big exception for the Supreme Court justices. It says that they took that controversial step because they were so frustrated when they saw what, Republican, what Republicans did on president. Obama's choices for his administration and federal judgmentships. So under the new rules, it takes only a simple majority of senators to confirm such appointments instead of the 60 typically needed to, uh, to force Senate action. So what the, <laughs> what the Democratic senators did basically just blew up in their face when it comes to this election. They thought that by doing that three years ago, that it was going to help them. And it did. It, it probably did help them. But now here comes Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is going to come in like a train and he's going to blow through everything. All of these things that need to be confirmed is going to be no problem. He's going to pick. They're going to get confirmed. His cabinet is going to get filled. Boom. Trump administration. 
they thought three years ago, they thought so perfectly, oh, yeah, you know, we don't have to worry about these new changes that we're going to do because Hillary Clinton's going to be president. Well, here comes reality, and reality just slapped them right in the face. And that's what they deserve. So we have nothing to worry about. The only thing we have to worry about is getting the right people for the right jobs. And as of right now, Vice President Mike Pence, perfect choice. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, perfect choice. We got White House Chief of Staff Ryan Priebus, really good choice. We got Director of uh, the CIA, Mike Pompeo. I really don't know who he is. I have to look him up, get more information on him. But a, a lot of people are saying that it was a good choice. National Security Advisor Michael T. Flynn. Okay, General Flynn. Very good choice. And um, that's what we know as of right now. We will be updating. We're doing update videos for every single one of them. But our next video is going to be about cabinet level officials. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed and you guys watched it all the way through. I know it's it's a pretty long video, but I just wanted to show basically what's going on as of right now. If you enjoyed it, please share it and also give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you check out our previous videos. They should be coming up on your screen. They're interactive. If you click on them, it'll take you to that video. While you're over there, give it a thumbs up and also share it along with this one. And if you are new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe by clicking the golden globe with a G on it. It's interactive. If you click on it, it'll give you the option to subscribe. We hope that you join the community. We are we are alternative news media. So we what we are here to give you the truth. We are here to let you know what's going on without the media bias. You know, like saying that Bannon is a racist. He's not. OK, he's a nationalist. He loves America. He wants to he wants America to be first, just like everyone else, just like Mike Pence, just like Jeff Sessions, j just like uh, um, Sheriff Clark, just like all of the people that 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 President Trump are picking. They're all nationalists. They're all they all love America and want to see America prosper and become the powerhouse that it needs to be all over the world. So that's how it is. Okay? We are the alternative right. We are the, the new upbringing of the silent majority because we are here to stop all of the, the disastrous things that has happened over the, li the last eight years. So make sure that you join us. Make sure that you stay here with us because we are here to give you the truth. So yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you guys next time. But until then, peace.